Okay, um, hello, good evening. Uh, today is November 7, Monday. Uh, we're here for Stonehenge Local Park Community Meeting. Um, next. So my name is Ho Jung Garland and tonight before we actually start the meeting, I'd like to go over a couple of housekeepings. Um, so this presentation is being recorded and will be posted on the project website. Um, and then during the presentation, we you may submit the questions and uh, comments by clicking the Q&A box at the top right of your screen. And after the presentation, you may submit the questions and comment through the uh, open town hall, which we are planning to have it open for a month. Um, and then we'll provide a copy of the uh, town hall link on the side so you can easily access that. Next. So um, uh, tonight I am here as Ho Jung Garland, uh, Park Planning Supervisor, and we have uh, several panelists with me. Um, Rachel Newhouse is the project manager, uh, and then Michelle Nelson is here to introduce about the community garden program. Lori Moore is here as a landscape architect, Richard Mollett, uh, park manager, Derek William, park police. Um, so at the beginning, we're going to be providing some project overview, um, why we are here, what are we going to be talking about, what's the purpose of this meeting, and uh, we'll be introducing several um, planning framework that's been gone through in this area and shaping this uh, um, park renovation plan in certain directions. So we'll be sharing about that. And then uh, Lori is going to be sharing about the uh, potential amenities we would like to recommend and see uh, how what kind of feedback we'll be uh, getting from you. Um, and then at the end, it will open up as a um, question and answer for the discussion. Next. So the purpose of today's meeting, why are we here? Um, what is this meeting is about? So um, we are soliciting uh, input from you. Uh, while we're planning to have improvement for this park, um, your input as an experience, uh, as a person who is living nearby and as a person who is actually using the park, your input is extremely important. Um, and for us as a staff to be here, um, there has been several different, uh, the countywide studies and plans uh, has gone through. So we wanted to actually share that almost as an orientation for this park and this area um, and then share with you what kind of a study has gone through. Um, so county has been making concerted effort to, to bring um, equitable investment, uh, particularly for the underserved area. And this, idea, uh, this area has been identified as a um, very much underserved area, first of all. And uh, the recent policy plan, which is approved in 2017, identified several emerging trending facilities, um, such as community garden. And uh, so therefore, community garden has been prioritized with the extra funding uh, and this uh, Stonehenge Park has been identified as a suitable location for the community garden. So we'd like to hear from you and your input. And then also um, recent uh, through recent sector plans study, uh, this park has been identified as uh, 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 you know, a park in need to, to improve the conditions. Um, so those uh, content will be shared uh, a little bit. And then and also um, there's a, a project uh, proposal nearby that will be potentially affecting this park and, um, and also Colum Old Columbia Pike, Pike Bikeway and the new development um, at the White Oak Town Center. So that can be introduced as well. Next. So where are we in the project schedule? So to Today is the November 7th, the first community meeting. And then after the community meeting, um, we will be soliciting further input through town hall, which I said, it'll be open for a month. And then uh, our designer is gonna be um, crafting the concept, of concept uh, throughout the winter of 2022. And then we'll be bringing it back for your input um, as a community meeting number two. So that'll be around early spring, 2023. 
And then we'll be sharing with the preferred concept development um, during the spring 2023. And then after that, it'll be going through detailed design and permitting process, which is uh, about to be late summer 2023. And hopefully after that, um, once the permit is approved, we can deliver this park with a newer, better condition soon to you. Okay, so um, next I would be introducing Rachel Newhouse as a project manager, and she'll be diving in with a detailed uh, information about this park. Rachel, take it away. Thanks, Ho Jung. Um, so welcome everybody. If you haven't been to this park, we wanted to tell you a little bit about it. It's 4.4 acres and it has two playgrounds, a half basketball court, exercise stations, and a small multi-use athletic field, which you can see in this picture with the soccer goals. MNC PPC acquired the space in 1997. This park is located at 12121 Old Columbia Pike in White Oak, Maryland. And at this time, we'd like to take an opportunity to find out where you all are located in reference to the park. So we're going to have a small quick poll for you to answer and we can understand who we're talking with tonight. Thanks. Okay, it looks like we have everybody answering. Um, and most of you live within a half mile or less. And then one person, oh, here we go. We've got one person who lives a half mile to a mile, still pretty close. And then someone else who is more than five miles away. And I'm not sure, oh, here we go. We can share the results. Yeah, so thank you for those of you, all of you who have shown up and, and many of you are very close to this park within walking distance. So um, that's really good to know who we're, who we're talking to and who we are designing for. <laughs> And we have a question. Do you have a map showing the parks and streets? Yes, that will be coming up in the presentation.
So let's see, I'm not sure how to get, let's see if I can close this. Okay, excellent. Um, okay, about the park. So here are some existing site photos. Um, in the upper left-hand corner, we have pictures of the existing playground. Again, the existing playground. In the lower left-hand corner, you'll see a picture of what was a volleyball court. It doesn't look like it gets a lot of use now. So it's, you know, kind of growing in with grass. We have the stormwater management facility along the trail that's at the front of the park. Here's the existing parking lot. And here's the half basketball court. The upper left-hand corner, we're going around the loop trail and looking back onto the beautiful um, rectangular multi-purpose field. It's usually used for soccer. And then if we look behind us along this loop path, we can again see the unused volleyball court and the half basketball court to the back and some more pictures of the playground. So the basketball court is very well used. Um, we see that as a high functioning facility, something that is seeming to serve the community very well. But the volleyball court, again, not well used, kind of growing in, doesn't seem to be the type of amenity that this neighborhood is looking for. And if we look here, we have a map, an aerial view of Stonehenge Park. So here's Route 29. And then if you come down Old Columbia Pike, this is how you access the park into the parking lot. We are right along Industrial Parkway. And you can see the orange dash line is the trail that has the exercise stations along it. We have the half, half basketball court here, the unused volleyball court here. We have these trails leading throughout the park, looping around. The pink is the playground. And then we have the rectangular field to the back. And where is our park located in association with other things surrounding it? So here we have our park in, outlined in green, Stonehenge. And then we have the residential community that was right next door. We have automotive services, commercial uses. They're to the east of the park on this side. On this side, we have the new White Oak Town Center that is under construction. I'm sure you all see it as you drive around your community. It's going to have retail, a new grocery store, um, some new residential all along this area. Then across Route 29, we have the single family housing residential development. As you can see, there's this brown line, which indicates a natural surface trail that connects those of you who are on the southeast side of 29, under 29, and up through Piney Branch Park, Paint Branch Park, and then over to the Martin Luther King Recreational Park, which has all kinds of amenities. And those of you familiar with it know it has an outdoor pool, all kinds of ball fields, all kinds of things going on there. It's a very active, recreational park. So our park recreation and open space plan that we do every five years is a way for us in the parks department to help deliver the right parks in the right places. We use data, um, demographics, level of service to understand what amenities are located where, um, where we are lacking in amenities, and it helps us prioritize emerging trends, which happen, you know, frequently, as you all probably know and have been reading about, there's a huge emerging trend 
um, with things like the community gardens and skate parks um, and facilities that we know need additional funding to help them quickly get built. So one of the things we looked at in the PROS 2022 plan were amenity, oops, amenities that would promote not only, you know, ways to get off the couch, ways to be active, recreate, but also activities um, and amenities that provide social connections. We've been feeling somewhat isolated over the last couple of years, and we've noticed that people really look to parks to provide gathering spaces, and our community gardens promote gathering and education. Um, the courts also have not only recreation, but the ways for the teams, you know, children on teams get to know each other, get to play together, very social and active. Our picnic shelters are a wonderful place for people to gather and commune and eat together. And, um, and then the playgrounds, of course, are very social and very active. So we are really trying to promote all these things in our various uh, proposals around the county, but specifically here as well. Um, I mentioned that we look at the level of service. So a level of service data is a way for us to look at the demographic or the population in the area. Um, here you can see a map that shows the drive shed population. And within that red boundary on the inside near the park, this is the drive shed, there are 65,839 people. And how can we serve them? What are they being, which amenities are they being served with and which are they lacking in? And as you can see, the bar below talks about those amenities that are deficient in sort of the red and orangish looking colors. Then we get to adequately served. We have just enough for that high population. And then sometimes we have more than enough for what we're serving. So if you look at the um, chart next door, next to the map, um, we are somewhat deficient in basketball courts for the, this community. Um, we would need more full size and more half basketball courts. We're also somewhat deficient in the soccer fields. We need more small and medium sized soccer fields. Uh, the community gardens, we are still deficient in that. Um, so we're looking to place mo more community gardens in the, in the drive shed. Picnic shelters, we could do better with providing more of those. We have a decent amount of volleyball courts and playgrounds. Um, and believe it or not, we have a surplus of skate parks in this drive shed area. So um, one of the other um, plans that's been going on, as Ho Jung mentioned, is the Fairland Briggs Cheney uh, master plan update. And through that update, it, we spent almost two years going out to the community, uh, canvassing, door-to-door -door knocking, talking to people um, with surveys, not just about this park, but about the whole Fairland Briggs Cheney Master Plan area, which is shown on this map. It's outlined in black, but you can see our park is right next door. So we feel like a lot of the comments that we were getting through the Fairland Briggs Cheney Master Plan outreach apply to this park. And many of the things we were hearing was, you know, people just wanted to see more soccer courts, more basketball courts, more gyms, more pools, you know, courts. Um, that was really sort of the driving discussion with the community when when they were talking about parks and recreation. So provide more basketball courts throughout the plan area, provide soccer play opportunities. And another topic that came up um, was how people really wanted to see artwork throughout this 
Farrell and Briggs Cheney corridor up and down Route 29 that represented the culture of the community, either in parks or in gateways um, to some of the shopping areas, you know, many methods of introducing artwork. And the culture of the community will tell you what we found um, when we did the population data around the Stonehenge Park, that's all in purple here. You can see that there's 3,847 people within this purple area and 53% are Black or African-American. We have it almost equally split up between white, Hispanic, and Asian, 13, 15, and 15, with 4% as other. So it's very good for us to understand the population and the cultural makeup of the community when trying to figure out the right amenities to propose. And then finally, we've been talking about community gardens and you know how that is one of the needs that our pros plan identified as you can see we are in the red star get my right here this is stonehenge um, but there are some existing community gardens throughout the area some up in here but there's a we get a waiting list every year because we get such demand for our community gardens um, and as you can see, many of the people who are on the waiting list are nearby. And so we really want to look at opportunities within this general area to provide community gardens. And with that, I'd like to introduce our staff person, Michelle Nelson. She is our community garden program manager, and she can tell you a little bit about how we identify places for community gardens and how they benefit the community. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, um, okay, just to share a little bit about the community garden program. The program started in 2009, 2010, and we have 12 sites across the county. The program provides a number of goods and services as part of managing the operations and offers different plot sizes across the county. Um, the plot fees are based on the plot sizes. So we have um, our smallest would be the gardening table. Um, I, the next size would be 200 square feet. The next size would be 400 square feet. And the next size up from that would be 625 square feet. So something that we have been exploring, um, which you'll see a little bit later, is our different typologies and how we can provide this amenity across the county in different ways and different models. Um, we are very proud to say that our program does have a very strong global presence, which is representative of the 40% or more um, foreign-born residents in the county. Next slide, please. So our program, we have five major priorities. Um, the first priority is garden expansion and maintenance, which is one of the, the main reason why we're here tonight. Um, the second is reducing food waste and food recovery. The third is stakeholder relationships, internal and external. So what partnerships do we, do we need for our program to really succeed inside of parks and outside of parks? Um, number four is education. So different outreach events and educational opportunities for the public and for our gardener base. And then number five is accessibility. Um, so if you see in this slide, we have a picture of um, the Nolte Community Garden, which thank you, um, which is a um, accessible garden in downtown Silver Spring that serves our seniors and also um, anyone who may potentially have any type of or need any type of accommodation to enjoy this amenity. And it also serves as a bridge to families who may be just learning how to grow their own food or may be experiencing food insecurity. Next slide, please. So as Rachel mentioned, um, we recently, I guess maybe in 2018, 2019, um, myself and another park planner, we, we conducted a site suitability 
study um, examining most of our parks within the county. Um, and we wanted to do an analysis where, where does it make sense for our parks to have community gardens? Um, and we use quite a few different, I guess, evaluation criteria slash prioritization um, kind of strategies. So this first slide really shows what we're looking for when we go out to do a site visit. Um, we're looking obviously for flat, open, sunny, and um, access to water, whether that's a water hydrant or if there's a park water fountain or some other means for water there. Um, we, that's essential for growing food. Um, we also look at parking and we also look at SEPTED, so which is crime, pre crime prevention through environmental design. So it really, we try to encompass all aspects of what gardening would be like for um, residents to actually participate in this amenity in their community. Next slide, please. So in looking at where do community gardens go across the county, this is actually a, a new, um, I guess, topic or something that we wanted to really focus on when we're expanding our community garden program. Um, we, we initially didn't factor in food insecurity, but it's really become something that we have seen uptick in the, in the county, but also across the nation with COVID, with inflation, with a bunch of different things, and just people di experiencing different types of hardships at different moments in their lives. And so um, when we were doing our site suitability study, we also started looking at who in that part of the county could really use this amenity as a vehicle to solve any hunger issues that they may be experiencing in their household. So as you can see on this chart, um, the darker color um, pink notates where in the county there is a higher food insecurity rate. Um, and how they get this number, they look at all these different variables, unemployment, poverty, um, median income, race, ethnicity, cost of living, um, and a couple of other different factors. And it's based on census tract information. And that helps us understand how many people are actually food insecure in, in different parts of the county. Um, so this information has changed obviously with COVID and just as years change, but um, Capital Area Food Bank actually put out a um, hunger heat map, which identifies that this area still is food insecure with roughly estimated 10, percent of people experiencing food insecurity in this part of the region. And you can see that Stonehenge is notated with the yellow star. Next slide, please. So in looking at, you know, our site suitability study, our how do we prioritize where we put community gardens, and why this matters. Um, we also looked at different models and different typologies across the nation. And so these are some examples that really served as inspiration for what we could do, what might work, what might not work. Um, so there's a picture from um, next door Prince George's County. This is the top picture is a picture from the senior garden, which has um, raised beds that are at the accessibility or, you know, the, the um, I'm sorry, the, the height that they need to be. And they're also small containers where people could also participate in growing. Um, San Francisco Department of Parks, obviously they have a different population density than us, but their model is very interesting in terms of how much space they actually provide. Sometimes people in our program are somewhat overwhelmed by 200 square feet or 100 square feet. And so um, in that part of the country, they only actually offer 50 square feet of growing space. And so we really try to think about what could we do here in Montgomery County to maybe either replicate or figure out how we, we could be better stewards of um, land and, and the use of the land. And this last, these last couple of pictures are actually from San Antonio, um, where you know there's still nice 
pristine, aesthetically pleasing, um, but again, the typology is very different and how they are built is very different. And we've kind of taken this into how we design, how we look at incorporating new community gardens across the county. Next slide, please. So in terms of what really came out of the site suitability study for these new community gardens, um, we narrowed it down to about 28 sites and then narrowed it down some more um, and did a bunch of site visits across the county. And so the, the next or ongoing kind of where my community gardens go in the future recommended sites are Kensington Heights Neighborhood Park, Fairland Recreational Park, Stonehenge Local Park, which is why we're here today, Calverton Galway Local Park and Edgewood Neighborhood Park, which actually is a community garden, a park that a community garden will be opening going into um, 2023. So in closing, um, our efforts with uh, the Fairland Brick Chaining Master Plan also have been discussing ideas around food system related centric activities. And so a community garden would benefit residents in a number of ways, including addressing food insecurity um, through community gardening, providing gardening spaces to apartment, condo, or townhome dwellers. This is a space of learning. So it's definitely an educational tool. Um, there are lower maintenance, smaller spaces to maintain. It's lower cost and this space would definitely increase community capacity and utilize um, a, a park space that was um, revitalized a park space into something that is vibrant and growing. Um, so I will now turn it back over to Rachel who will continue with our presentation for tonight. Thanks so much, Michelle. So after hearing all of the benefits of community gardens, we would really like to consider adding a community garden to Stonehenge. Um, some other issues that we've been hearing from the community is to pl please increase access into the park from all around it. There's some interest in having um, a sports court either a soccer court or a full-size basketball court um, to increase just options of play to add some picnic pavilions because picnic pavilions, um, as we have been learning, offer social gathering options to renovate the playgrounds for use by multi-use age groups. So not only having the two to five-year-olds and the five to 12-year-olds uh, accommodated as they are now, but expanding the use to reach teenagers and older adults. Um, we'd like to look at adding some artwork if possible to, you know, keep with the theme of the entire Fairland Briggs Cheney area. Um, we would love your input on the need for the exercise equipment that's currently there at the park along the front of the trail. Um, do you use it? Do you think it's it's worthwhile to keep? Should we, you know, do that or do something like parkour or an obstacle course? And we really want to keep the athletic field um, because, you know, not only is it used for soccer and other pickup games, but there's ways to use it for festivals and ultimate frisbee and all kinds of other amenities. So those are the program. Um, those are the types of amenities we are considering for our pro program of requirements. And I'd like to now introduce our landscape architect for this park project, Lori Moore, to talk a little bit about how she's considering the various menus of uh, amenities and the type of input that we're looking for from you. Hey, thanks, Rachel. Um, as Rachel mentioned, I'm Lori Moore. I'm a landscape architect with the Park Development Division. And so I'm going to be the project manager for the park renovation project as we start to um, get into the design 
Uh, this project is what we call a mini refresher. And a mini refresher uh, provides for efficient and cost-effective improvements that allow the department to make uh, more significant updates to parks in less time. Funding for this project will provide for the playground renovation, uh, ADA improvements, the addition of a community garden, as well as some other minor improvements to the park. The next slide, please. For this uh, slide, I'll speak a bit about the preliminary scope for the project. And for some of these items, we would really like to hear your input on what you would like to see in the park. So uh, please provide your thoughts using the uh, Q&A button or uh, as part of the Open Town Hall survey. Um, as part of the project, we're looking at providing more pedestrian connections to the adjacent neighborhoods. And if you look on the um, exhibit there on the slide, the proposed connections are indicated with those uh, orange dashed arrows. So that includes um, more connections to the condominiums on the west and also providing a connection from the park to development in the south. We're also looking into a potential connection from the uh, linear path um, in the north, and that's indicated there, um, uh, the dark um, black line in the north, uh, the, that's the uh, existing linear path. Um, we're looking at a potential connection from that path in the north to Industrial Parkway. Um, this is an area where we noticed an existing footpath that was heavily used. And we noticed actually when we were visiting uh, the park, a lot of people were using it as kind of a cut through. Um, so we're going to explore the idea of making a more formal connection here. Uh, so please uh, let us know your thoughts on creating more of these connections from the park into the community, particularly to the condominiums on the west. Um, also, as part of this um, park, we're planning to make improvements to the that linear path on the north um, side of the park. We need to ensure that it meets ADA accessibility guidelines, particularly where the path connects to the road at the intersection of Old Columbia Pike and Industrial Parkway for the fitness equipment along the path. And that's shown there in the light green, uh, light green uh, bubbles. We'd like your input on whether it should be removed or remain in place and be renovated. If the uh, fitness stations are removed, they could be replaced with something else, such as bench swings or another type of seating. There's also the possibility of putting fitness equipment in the interior of the park as opposed to along the, the path. So please let us, let us know your thoughts on that. We also plan to make improvements to the parking lot, which would include some regrading since the current ADA spaces are not in compliance, as well as resurfacing and some other potential adjustments. Uh, as part of the scope, we'd like to renovate or repurpose the existing courts. So that includes the half size basketball court as well as the volleyball court, uh, which are located on the east side of the park and are shown uh, there where Rachel is pointing in, in uh, green. We've done some preliminary studies and have determined that we can fit a full size basketball court in this area. And we also think that the volleyball court location would be a good space to provide the community garden. A soccer court would also be an option instead of a full-size basketball court. So please let us know what type of courts uh, you think would be most used in the park. As part of the project, we're planning to renovate the playground. Right now, the playground takes up an area of about 8,000 square feet. And typically our local park playgrounds are between about 3,500 and 5,000 square feet. So that gives us some space to uh, work with, especially if we look to re realigning that interior park path system. And in addition to the playground, we may be able to provide other amenities, such as an obstacle course, a picnic pavilion, more site furniture, or even more space with shade, if that is desired. And that is something that we ask for your input on in the open town hall survey. Uh, the community garden uh, that I've already mentioned, but we're looking for an area that receives a lot of sun and will easily connect to the existing water line. So the old volleyball ball court location seems like the best option, but we're 
um, we're exploring other locations on the site as well. Um, and then for this project, we have no plans to renovate the existing rectangular field that'll, that will stay as is. And also, um, as I mentioned, a large component of this project will be the ADA improvements and upgrading the existing stormwater management facilities or providing new stormwater management facilities where they're needed. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, for the next few slides, I have a, a few design inspiration photos for the amenities that, that are being considered for Stonehenge. This slide is showing athletic court photos from various parks in our system. Both photos on the right are showing a soccer court that was installed in the county. And then the photo on the left is of a, um, of a basketball court. Next slide, please. Here we have some photos of playground uh, equipment um, from spinning activities to swinging activities. Our playgrounds are designed for ages two to five and five to 12, and they will include a variety of activity types. And we'll go into more details on the playground at the next community meeting. Next slide, please. Here are some photo examples of obstacle courses and adult fitness equipment. The top row has photos of obstacle course equipment, which could be provided for ages uh, 13 and up. And it's an idea where it could help provide an activity for the teenage group that really no longer enjoys playgrounds um, as well as for adults. And on the bottom row, you'll see some examples of uh, the more traditional stationary fitness equipment, similar to what's currently provided at Stonehenge um, along that path in the north. So we'd like to hear from you on whether um, this, this type of fitness equipment, if it's used, if it's desired, and if the preferred location is along the path or further within the interior of the park. Next slide, please. Uh, here are some inspirational, photo, inspirational photos of uh, community gardens. Um, having a community garden at Stonehenge may provide an opportunity for integrating artwork into the park. This art could come in a variety of forms from a mural to a simple entry sign to a decorated cistern. And it offers an opportunity for the community to get involved. Um, I think it would help to promote a uh, sense of ownership over this community garden. Next slide, please. Finally, this slide shows a few photos of seating or gathering spaces. The top middle photo is an example of bench swings uh, that were mentioned earlier in the presentation. You also have some examples of tr traditional benches and picnic tables or more creative types of seating. A picnic pavilion is an amenity that could be considered for the park if that is desired. Um, and an example of a, a picnic pavilion in one of our parks is pictured there in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, next slide, please. So just to reiterate the uh, tentative schedule, the next steps moving forward, after tonight's meeting and the information we collect from the Open Town Hall, we'll work on the concept development and those concepts will be shared at a second community meeting, um, as well as more information about our playground renovation program. And after we get your feedback from the second community meeting, we'll refine the ideas into um, a, a um, preferred concept and post it to the website for any uh, additional input. Then we'll move into detailed design and permitting sometime next summer. Uh, next slide, please. So please remember to go to the Open Town Hall to complete the survey. It can be accessed from our project website and then also the link is provided here on this slide. Um, this is a screenshot of an example of um, what, you'll, what you'll see that when you go to the survey. And um, there are several questions here about the, the amenities um, that you would like to see in the park. Next slide, please. All right, so thank you so much for taking uh, the time to hear, all, hear, hear the presentation. 
And now I'll turn it over to uh, Ho Jung, who's going to lead the Q&A discussion. Hey, thank you so much, Laurie, about the wonderful presentation. Um, and uh, there has been several questions that are coming up um, while a lot of people are actually uh, attending this meeting. So I really appreciate the, your feedback. It looks like uh, there's excitement about the community garden uh, potential. So, um, uh, you know, Sui is asking, like, what's the process signing up the community garden? Michelle, if you can um, lay out out some of the possibility or if there's any link if you can provide that'll be awesome okay thank you for that question sue um so typically when we have a community meeting this is an opportunity for um, community members who are very close to the park to sign up um, and kind of reserve their spot um, we are pretty far out from this um, community garden and we, we still want to get some additional feedback from folks. Um, but if you are interested, we are um, taking names through our community gardens email, which I can drop in the chat, um, but it's community gardens at montgomeryparks.org. Um, and so we kind of file that information away and then we also use our wait list to identify um, if there are people who can potentially come over to this garden. Um, we also have a number of food assistance providers in the county, including Rainbow Development um, Center, Mana Food Center, who would also be able to refer their clients to this community garden. So um, that, those are two ways that folks can sign up or express their interest. And you can also, um, I'm not sure if there's a space on the open town hall, but you can also reach out to me directly with my email below um, and just send us an, a message that you're interested and then we can keep contact with you throughout this whole process. Great, thank you. And uh, I'll be reading uh, excitement about the community garden, you know, saying that yes, 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 community garden with a limited plus size and very thoughtful layout and circulation. So thanks for the feedback and great support. Um, of course, more shade would be definitely uh, uh, something that we'll be thinking about. Um, and it says also uh, artwork could be a part of the beautification and sense of ownership. Any chance of mural in the back of the MBA building? Not, not to put you on the spot, but uh, Lori, do you have any thought about the beautification or potential art um, for the uh, uh, park improvement? Sure, um, I think that's something we can look into. Um, integrating art, um, I think in terms of a, a larger public art project is, is not feasible um, for this particular park, but I think we can definitely look at integrating artwork into some of the amenities, um, such as some of the uh, photos I shared about um, the community garden, and yes, a, a mural or a... Um, um, providing you know artwork as part of the courts um, or fencing or something like that um, it's is something that we can look into for this this park if that's desired thank you and then uh, while we're related uh, um, for the particular facility and the improvement there is also um, question about or, or actually full support about full basketball court is needed. Um, so while there's a great support, would you like to elaborate a little bit more of a basketball court? And actually uh, another comment is that uh, it'll be good to see something like a uh, Landier Park in Columbia. I was just actually checking uh, from photos and looks really good, wonderful playground. So Lori, if we can uh, elaborate something about the consideration about the playground and basketball, that'll be helpful. Sure, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the questions to see um see what um what people are saying about about the um, basketball court. Um, yeah, definitely a basket. We looked at it just early on, some preliminary studies, and definitely we see that uh, we can we can fit a full size basketball court in that in that um, in that space right now on the east side of the park where there's currently a half basketball court. So that's going to be um, a really good opportunity for the park. We, our understanding is that that court is really used. Um, so um, that's definitely something that, you know, we can look into providing for this park is that full-size basketball court. Um, 
in terms of the playground, um, let's see, I'm looking at the, if there's a question in, re in relation to the playground. Let's see. Yeah, I, I published it already, but it, it's more about the um, comparing with the Blandier Park in um, in Colombia, oh, okay. and uh, it's, a, it's a regional park, so it's actually a lot bigger scale of the playground uh, compared to this local park we're planning. But I'm sure certainly there's a good component we can look into. So uh, yeah, uh, maybe like looking at the, some of the images and potential you know site visit and uh, be able to incorporate some other feature it might be great. Yeah, thank you, thank you for the comment. Yeah. While you're on a spot also, <laughs> mm -hmm. there is a question about the lighting. Um, this person is asking about, uh, you know, would you like to see lights on the uh, trail parallel old Columbia Pike, keeping the fitness equipment, provide a paved path along the east side of the path adjacent to the automobile repair shops to formalize the connection between the townhouses and to the east side of MBA. Mini garden is okay, provide a bike parking. And first of all, it is like I can definitely concur about the bike parking. Um, uh, our uh, you know, county has been uh, you know, making concerted effort to provide a bike parking because we want to make sure that people are walking, biking, not just driving to park. So that way it increases more physical activity opportunity. But uh, Lori, if you can have some thought or share some thought about the lighting, that'll be great. Yeah, in terms of the lighting, that has that is something that has come up that we've talked about um, that yes, there may be a need and, and a desire for, for lighting um, along that path. Um, it's our understanding that a lot of people use that path even when they're not using the park um, to get from place to place, to get to the bus stop. Um, so that is something that, um, that is being considered if, if lighting um, would be valid to provide you know, along this path. So um, yeah, we appreciate your comment, comment on that in terms of the lighting. Um, and then I'll take a look at, I'm not sure exactly which um, path area you're referring to in the, in the post, but I'll take a closer look at that, at that comment. Yeah. Thank you. And then I see that there's an additional comment to saying that, yes, we need more lighting for sure. So <laughs> thanks for the uh, comment. And uh, perhaps this could be related to the comment, but uh, one of the um, question is actually um, related, uh, or actually this is more comment about the septet, which is the safety related matters. Unfortunately today, the park police couldn't attend it, but definitely we'll be looking into septet strategies for uh, Stone Age Park while we're looking into improving this area. So hopefully it answers the question. Um, and then uh, another comment is about full basketball court may bring additional players and more foot traffic to the area. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we want to see more people actually coming to the park and park is more utilized um, because it ultimately bring healthy life and healthy um, you know, activities. So we wanted to actually bring more people. Um, so yeah, parks should be more and better utilized. And that's one of the uh, goals that we want to have. And then potentially through that, people can socialize. So that way uh, people can be more engaged and create a sense of community. Um, so that is something that we wanted to actually achieve um, as a part of the recommendation from our policy uh, plan called the PROS as a um, Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Plan. Just wanted to mention that. Um, and there's a comment about love the garden idea, larger and updated playground and basketball court. Um, so I believe we already um, mentioned about the playground, so hopefully that answered. Um, and this comment is about no picnic area. This will also bring more foot traffic, trash, and noise. Um, any comment or thought, Lori, would you like to add? Um, yes, I mean, yeah, thank you for your comment. Um, I mean, that's the kind of information that we definitely wanna know um, is, you know, there's only, 
you know, so much space for so many amenities in the park. Um, so when you look on the open town hall survey, we've kind of asked you to prioritize different amenities that you would like to see. And one of those is um, a picnic pavilion. So, um, so yeah, we definitely want to know if that's something that you want to see in the park or not. Um, a picnic area, I'm assuming by the comment that they're referring to um, a picnic area, which also would include a picnic pavilion. Um, and that's something um, we were hearing, you know, early on um, that this this um, particular um, this particular area is um, lacking in some picnic facilities and pavilions, and we thought it might be a nice amenity for the park. Um, so yeah, that's something that we want to hear your feedback on, uh, definitely. Um, whether you would like to see picnic facilities in this park or not. So yeah, thank you for the comment. Thank you. Um, and then since there is also shade related color, I'm gonna still pick this. <laughs> It'll be probably Lori. Um, shade of cover, play, uh, shade of covers over play area are needed as well as fence the area around the park. Okay. Oh, I see it. Okay. Shade covers over play areas are needed. Yes, so with our parks, we usually, um, we do look to provide shade. Um, usually the shade um, is gonna be provided with um, existing trees or proposed trees around the park um, or around the playground. Um, if you're referring to shade structures, um, usually that's, that's something that we don't provide for our playgrounds um, just because they can be, not only costly but a maintenance issue um, but we will we will consider and we always consider shade um, when we're designing playgrounds um, and there's there's also quite a bit of um, you know wooded cover in this park as well so we can kind of capital capitalize on that when we when we look to um, look to the location for the playground um, and make sure we consider shade so thank you yeah, and then uh, this is also uh, design related to the comments, so I'd like to uh, make sure that it's uh, noted. Um, proposed new path would be on the opposite side of the park from the existing trail between the soccer field and the automobile properties. There are no playground facilities within Stonehenge townhouses for young kids, so having the park usable for kids too young to travel on their foot. Um, it sounds like this uh, person is commenting about the better connection would be um, helpful because um, we definitely noticed that the um, when community is disconnected from the park, while it's like right by, it forces people to go to larger, bigger road, which kind of forces people to drive at that point. Um, so oftentimes we actually see and experience if there could be direct connection from the adjacent community, it makes it easier for a community to use. Um, so Rachel, actually, if you don't mind putting the aerial so people can see a little more um, up close uh, while we're talking, uh, that could be helpful. But yeah, we're definitely, um, uh, you know, um, making a concerted effort to, to be able to provide additional connections. And then this comment is about there's no shade over the current play area. The pl pl playground is, um, is get very hot and shaded structures are needed. Um, so yeah, seems like uh, there are ample comment about the shade structure. So we'll be definitely mindful about providing shade and, you know, uh, you know, trees. So that way um, kids can play easily without being too hot during the summer. Uh, let's see. Um, and uh, this is a little more like logistic comment. Um, there was a question about the old Columbia Pike. Is it both side of the 29 or what? Um, so Rachel, if you can show the aerial, it might be actually more helpful. Uh, I believe it's both sides. Uh, Rachel, would you like to comment about it or verify? Yeah, and I'm not sure what 
the question is? Yeah, I think this might be helpful. Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, right by, I mean, both side of 29 has a old Columbia Pike. Yes, um, yes. Here and on the southeast side of 29. Yeah, so some portion exists only one side, some portion exists both sides, but it is still called as old Columbia Pike. Right, right. It it does get a little confusing since it's on both sides of 29, but we're talking about the southeast side of 29 adjacent to the park, this side. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. A few. And uh, there's some question about the uh, White Oak Center and having some concern about additional traffic. I mean, we're not the one who is proposing or dealing with the White Oak Center uh, proposal, but uh, I mean, Rachel, or uh, you know, if you know anything, if you can share some more detail, that would be helpful. Yeah, I mean, there's gonna be significant amount of parking provided for the new town, White Oak Town Center, um, for the grocery store and the new retail over there. So that is being provided in that area. I don't know that there'll be a lot of traffic down Old Columbia Pike by the park. It'll probably be, you know, to the north of the park area up in here. And also at this intersection, which is being improved by that um, new development of the Oak, White Oak Town Center. So you'll see a lot of improvements to walkways and bikeways as part of that new development and crossing 29 also improved as part of that development. And some of the road reconstruction in this area will also be improved as part of that new development. Yeah, and then uh, related to that, Michael is actually providing good feedback saying that with the new White Oak Town Center development, Lighting the path will be more important than ever. Uh, lots yeah. of foot traffic on paths. You know, you're right. I mean, once we have more development, more residents will be there. And while they're nearby, we definitely want them to walk, not not drive. Um, so to do that, the lighting would be definitely um, helpful for them to be encouraged to walk. Okay, and. Um, this comment is about, um, it's a little bit more outside, but we'll see if we have any um, comment or thought about this. This is, there is a parking issue directly across from the existing park and Stonehenge condos. Is this group aware and what are plans to deal with this? Any idea? Um, so are the Stonehenge condos, those right off of Clifton? Over here? Maybe it says park, uh, there's a parking issue directly across the existing park and Stone Edge condos. Yeah, that must be right here then. Um, well, we're not aware of it. Is it because of, oop, go back. Well, and the interesting thing is that we're not seeing a lot of excess parking in the park due to what may be an issue next door at the condos. So not sure what's going on there. Maybe that person can provide a little more information. Okay. Yeah, if the clarification comes, I will... Um... Sure that, but uh, yeah, this person is clarifying that no, please, we don't need any more foot traffic here or um, not in favor of additional foot traffic through the neighborhood. Um, so we can also look into see whether um, the connection is uh, in favor of more people or not. Um, I believe our survey might actually include uh, related to question. Lori, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, we don't have, I don't believe we have a survey question part asking particularly about those neighborhood connections, but there is, there is a space um, for like an open format question where you guys can, you know, tell us anything that you want to tell us about the park, so. 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. the comment is noted and uh, further survey in the town hall uh, feedback will be um, collected. So if you can share with your neighbor and uh, uh, bring some feedback back, uh, that will be helpful. And then this person is making a comment. Yes, very little parking in the townhouse neighborhood. Cars parked all up and down old Columbia Pike. Um, so I guess there's some overflow parking from the community. That's interesting to know. Um, Rachel, any thoughts additionally, more comment? Yeah, I'm not sure how we deal with overflow parking in the townhouse development. Um, like I said, it's not spilling over into the parking at the park, at least from what we've noticed. So um, I guess people just don't want to be that far away from the house that they're trying to get to. But yeah, I mean, that's interesting comment to, to, to note. We'll definitely talk to park manager to kind of gather their input as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, we experienced it from other area that sometimes when the adjacent community doesn't really provide uh, adequate parking, the surplus become, uh, surplus start eating up parks parking or parks of property uh, and sometimes it causes the trouble. So we'll definitely monitor the usage of the parking and make sure the parking space is more utilized for the park users uh, rather than de facto community parking space. Um, so thanks for the uh, comment. Uh, yeah, okay, so Michael is definitely commenting the limited parking space is not a Montgomery County parks problem. Person have been parking illegally on old Columbia Pike adjacent to the condo, but have not been ticketed. Parking mm -hmm. prohibition on old Columbia Pike should be lifted, but there is beyond the purview of Montgomery parks. Um, so yeah, we'll look into, uh, let's see, is the, is the road is owned by us or not? looks like it not, uh, Rachel, do you know? Okay. Yeah. So it is outside of our purview. Um, yeah. so it's kind of hard to reinforce, but if, when we, when we go through the, uh, design process, if we can connect it with MC dot and have a conversation, we'll definitely uh, look into that. So thanks for the comment and saying that, yes, it's definitely outside of the uh, park purview, but uh, through this process, if you can engage the uh, right authority, we'll try to do that. Uh, yeah, it's a related comment. It does a spill over into the park. Parking is full in neighborhood. More families living together with more adult in each home brings more cars. So yeah, yeah I mean, that's an interesting notion that you're all bringing up. Uh, at this point that, you know, that's why in a way, I mean, we just heard that like some community that member doesn't really like to having a direct connection to the, uh, from the community to the park. But, you know, we're also at the same time hearing these kind of parking problem. And um, I mean, it's actually spillover parking potentially, but uh, at the same time, even like, uh, you know, additionally, if park people want to use the park and if they can, come to park directly, then it's potentially eliminating some of the parking demand for the park users. So while it's not a direct cause and effect, there could be some um, mitigation effect uh, by having a better connection. So hopefully it can be considered. Um, so, okay. Wow, seems like we addressed all the questions. Um, any other thought or observation from the panelists before we close the um, meeting tonight? Well, I just wanna say that we really appreciate people taking the time. I, I see another question popped up. Um, we really appreciate you all taking the time to think about this project with us. And please go to the website for the Open Town Hall and please let your neighbors know. Um, this will only get better if the more people who communicate and work with us on it. So thanks so much. Yeah, we really appreciate uh, all this um, 
kind of detailed information you know, as a park user, as a residence nearby, you know, this kind of parking issues or potential connectivity, whether it's a pros and cons, all these things are uh, something that we wanted to actually hear from you, whether this kind of connection is perceived as a plus for the community or is it considered as a new essence you know, to the community and why, you know, um, so understanding the the needs from the ground will definitely help us to better design this park to improve. So thank you so much for taking your time. I know, you know, it's a hard to during the weekday, um, late at night like this. This is, you know, potentially taking up the uh, time from your family time or dinner time. Um, and a lot of you attended, you know, for this meeting and to provide a comment like this, we really appreciate it. And as Lori said, uh, this will be, a lot of these input will be actually helpful for her, you know, for us to design this park. So please um, share the survey and spread the word. And uh, the survey link is already live, so you can actually start taking the surveys as of as we speak right now. So thank you um, and uh, appreciate it. And good night.